spotlighting the very best at Geneva College Golden Tornado Athletics. This is Tornado Tuesday. And now, here are your hosts, Van Zanek and Andrew Fee. Well, welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays, another uh, virtual uh, episode here. So we're excited about that. We are um, working from home. So um, I've been working from home a little longer uh, due to my uh, testing positive for COVID. So virtual seems the best way right now. Um, I'm feeling better though. Thanks, Van, for asking. Yeah, I'm glad to. Uh, I'm glad. I, I was. Uh, I was wondering how things were going. I mean, I know that, you know, you have been uh, probably the one of the most most cautious people we have on our campus in terms of COVID protocol. So, um, ironic that uh, that you did test positive, but I know you're feeling better. So, glad to be back with you. Yeah, and we got last week off. Uh, we had last week off for Thanksgiving, um, and this week uh, we have Dean Swank, Jamie Swank. Uh, joining us for the show and, and just I mean she's an amazing person she works really hard and has advanced our institution so much during her short time here um, we just really enjoy working with her yeah you mentioned Thanksgiving break I mean nobody deserved it more than Jamie did and uh, you know a lot of people up in her area student development residence life um, those folks much like our athletic trainers that we spoke with last year last uh, last episode um, have really bared the burden of this epidemic pandemic and um, have really worked extended hours through the weekends, through the nights, um, trying to navigate quarantine and isolation and those types of things. And um, that's in addition to all the other things that they normally would be doing. And so, uh, so yeah, it, it's going to be fun to catch up with Jamie and kind of let everyone hear her perspective from a student side um, of what campus life was really like this past semester, because it, it was filled with challenges. And um, as we said before, we're just so grateful that we were able to get through what we got through. Yeah, I mean, that's that's so true. We were able to get through the, the semester. Um, all the students are home, uh, remote finals at this point. Um, so we're, we're just blessed that we got to stay on campus. And we're looking forward, you know, right now to coming back the end or middle to end of January. I think that brings a lot of challenges. We've never seen student athletes have such a long break. Uh, and talking to Coach Sanacero, for example, this morning, you know, is, he's very concerned about how what that's gonna look like when they come back. Yeah, there's a lot of, of uh, well, they call it re-socialization now is the new term, but just basically being in game shape and um, hopefully getting them a couple weeks. You know, we're targeting the first week of January, January 8th, around that time frame to bring our men's and women's basketball teams back with um, the first day of competition as it stands now set for January 23rd. So all those plans are being made. You were just looking at travel arrangements and things like that. So um, we're looking to have this, this dream of ours become a reality in the second semester. So um, still a lot of preparation to go along, you know, the, the testing and all those types of things, just having meetings this past week with uh, some of the options of, of what we're going to do, meeting with our team physician, our athletic trainers and um, figuring out exactly what that's going to look like for our student athletes when they get back here, even on game day, testing those folks involved with game management, those types of logistical um, items need to be dealt with. So um, we're excited, um, cautiously optimistic. Uh, we're, we're hopeful our, our students are going to do what they need to do when they're away uh, from campus and more importantly, um, follow the protocols once they get back here. Yeah, and I think uh, we we said we did something over the summer thanking all the frontline workers and essential workers, and I just think that's so relevant again. So I want you know from from us, our department, uh, the institution as a whole. I just think we need to continue pray for the frontline workers and essential workers. Is you know it's it's becoming a struggle again, and what they're doing. You know myself getting tested three times last week. Um, I understand you know they're really sacrificing a lot. Uh, we're just we're just grateful for all of them. It's very easy to take things like that for granted, and we've got we've gone through this for so many months now. We remember what it was like back in March and talking about those frontline workers and putting themselves in harm's way, and the way this has resurfaced now and come back around. Hospitals are full again. 
um, ICU units, all those different types of things are happening all over again. Um, but you're exactly right. Uh, they're, they're the people putting themselves in danger each and every day they take to take to their job. So, and we have a lot of those folks here on our campus that do the same type of thing in our health department, uh, Beth Carlson and her, and her crew. Um, and then of course, Beth and Charity, uh, 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 Charity and Brian and Dan down in our training room, um, they're gonna be susceptible to those types of things once we get back here too. So yeah, for sure, kudos to all those folks out there um, doing what they can to keep everyone safe. Uh, we'll be right back with our interview with Dean Jamie Swank. Well, welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays. We're joined with Dean of Student Development, Jamie Swank. Uh, I'm really excited about this opportunity. Um, Jamie, it's been a crazy semester for you and your staff uh, with the pandemic. Just talk through yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, probably crazy for all of us, um, um, our staff uh, for sure, but I think it's a college as a whole. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a it's been a crazy ride. I think starting in this last spring, um, you know, the last several months have been, you know, you know, move and adapt, move and adapt. And, um, you know, I think as coaches, you know, you guys probably preach that all the time, right? Like, hey, the, the game plan's not working. We we need to adjust, um, halftime adjustments. Um, and so I think that that's really in many ways been the feel of the last 10 months is, you know, run a play. Um, hey, what's working? Evaluate it. What's not working? Um, and adjust. And um, and so uh, I think probably like most of society right now, we're we're banged up. It's been a full season, um, and uh, we're we're tired and definitely ready for for the holidays. But I think at the same time, um, I actually just left a, a meeting with 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 my department where we debrief the year and, 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 and really just we're celebrating the wins. You know, um, I think we saw students, uh, faculty, staff, and parents be incredibly resilient. Um, I, I think, you know, in difficult times, your true character shows. And I think the character of our institution uh, and the people connected to it uh, really came through. And um, whether that's parents who couldn't visit campus in the same ways that they did to students, um, you know, not being able to um, engage student programming in the same way and having to try new things and do things in a different way. Um, I'm really proud of our campus. Um, you know, there are definitely moments where we got tired and could have done some things better and we're gonna work on that going into January, but, um, but, and I think too, we have a lot of graduate assistants in our area. And I just keep thinking about what a incredible learning opportunity for young professionals um, in our field to uh, really have to think about what is leadership and what does it look like in a moment like this when all the things that you know don't work because they can't work right now. Um, and so how do we think about things differently? So uh, probably one we'll reflect on for years to come and one we will all be really glad is done and over with uh, when we're on the other side of this thing. So, uh, yeah. So I would say, say we're 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 glad to have landed and uh, excited to pick back up in the spring, but really really pumped about a couple of weeks of of low key. So, so Jim, we've talked about the perseverance of our students and our student athletes throughout the semester and what mm -hmm. they've had to endure. And I know you have a a strong heart for the students, like Andrew and myself. You're a Geneva grad yourself, and yep. You know, we forgive you for going to Grove City for a short time. We'll, we'll forgive you. We'll forgive you of that. We got Everybody you back on the right side now. Bear, but, right? Everybody yeah, exactly. Has their exactly. I, I just wanted to, wanted you to talk a little bit about Geneva and how excited number one you were to come back here, mm -hmm. um, and what about this place that is so special for you in your heart? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and probably Van and I's stories overlap a little bit in this, where. Um, I think Van, if I'm if I'm right, you you came to know Christ while at Geneva, Very uh, correct. Athlete. Yep. Um, and um, I uh, came to know Christ uh, not long before I came to Geneva. I was a, a very young, immature believer, and um, yeah, and 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 the first in my family to go to college, and so uh, I had no idea what to look for in an institution, and. Um, you know, and the Lord and his faithfulness, um, in hindsight, it never feels like it in the moment, but in hindsight, you can look back and go, man, that's exactly what I needed. And, um, 
and I think those same things that I needed were the same things that made me excited to come back. Um, I always say to people that Geneva is this really humble uh, place in the middle of this like really humble city. Um, and, 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 but the Lord just does this incredible work. And I think that, right, like we're in the Christmas season right now. And I think, you know, in many ways, that's how the Lord always works. You know, this, this infant in a manger, you know, from this no name part of Israel, um, you know, and God takes these seemingly um, humble things and uses them to change the world. And, and I believe that, and it's not hyperbole in any way. Like I really believe um, that God uses this kind of salt and earth place of Geneva, a very intimate, unassuming um, place uh, to, to help students discover himself and themselves in the process. And uh, I think one of the things I love most about Geneva, it, it's tied to that is I think academia um, has a lot of ego and, and I don't think you can truly disciple and truly teach and you can, can't really learn very well when everything's wrapped in ego. Um, and that's probably the thing I'm most proud of at Geneva is that, you know, you will see senior leaders picking up trash or running their own copies. You'll see, you know, uh, coaches who have helped us deliver meals uh, during quarantine. You'll see faculty sitting with students outside working through a problem um, and the accessibility and the approachability. Um, you know, I think learning is amazing, but it happens best when um, everybody's willing to get their hands dirty and uh, do the actual work of discipleship and to be in it 100%. And I think you'd be hard pressed at Geneva. Uh, we know, we're not perfect by any means. We're, you know, sinners in need of grace every day. But I think it would be, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody at Geneva, um, you know, that's not all in. Um, for students and, and wanting good for their students. And, um, and and having worked in higher ed now for about 20 years, that's not always a given. Um, and so I'm proud of that. I'm proud of uh, the fact that coaches and faculty and staff are for students and for their thriving and for their goodness. And um, yeah, so yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm closer to Heinz Field, so that that helps. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, God's country. There you go. I, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, a twofold question. Um, just kind of, you kind of touched on it, but talk about your journey, you know, getting here, and then uh, working in student development. Now, mm -hmm. I'm always, I'm always asking the question myself: Is how do you stay positive when? You know, yeah. a lot of the issues are tough situations dealing with students. Mm -hmm. You have good things, but how do you stay positive working yeah. through those tough things? Um, so your journey in that. Uh, yeah. Question. Yeah. So I think I fell in love with student development actually as a student at Geneva. Um, uh, probably the, and to this day, probably some of the best disciplers in my life were people that worked uh, under the student development banner at Geneva. Um, and I was really rough around the edges when I came and, um, and the grace that I see in hindsight, you know, you don't realize it in the moment, but in hindsight, you're like, holy smokes, I was a mess. Uh, uh, I had to be so annoying. I probably asked the most ignorant questions and, um, and still so many of them um, that I'm connected to even uh, still today. Um, uh, so that really kind of wet my appetite. I didn't really, um, I didn't even know student development was a field. You know, you see people working in it, but you don't go, oh, that's maybe something I could do. Uh, and then actually uh, one of the staff in student development when I was graduating said, hey, you should really consider, consider this. And so I looked into it, ended up in the higher ed program, the master's of, of higher education program at Geneva. And that kind of started my journey uh, worked in student development for a little while and then um, went on to get my law degree uh, and then circled back actually to higher ed through teaching um, higher education law in our in our program at Geneva and that's kind of how it's kind of came full circle 
Um, but I think being out out of the college environment for a little bit, and, and I love the law, um, but there's just something, right? Like there's just something when August hits um, and the um, possibility that's in the air every September um, and this just energy that comes with working with young people in this really critical season of their life um, and knowing how pivotal it was for me. Um, so that's kind of um, kind of how I ended up kind of looking at student development and landing in it. Uh, staying positive, I mean, I think this is where, um, you know, kind of having my own messy path to the Lord and, you know, even after coming to know the Lord and having to, to figure out what does it mean to do this thing and um, to follow Christ, what does this mean? Um, I think in some ways, the longer you're in the field, the more discouraging it can get because you want students to get it so badly and you see the same things happen over and over again. Um, but I think at the same time, the longer you're in it, you also know, hey, like this student who 10 years ago that I worked with, who I was like, man, are they going to get across the finish line now has an incredible career is, you know, starting a not for profit is engaging the world in really redemptive ways and has a family and is this incredible person. And you're like, I'm not sure what, how this happened, but it's it somehow, right? Like somehow the Lord always gets us there. And, um, and I think too, like, um, I've actually uh, learned to just pray regularly. Um, Lord, let me see enough fruit that I can be encouraged to keep going and let me not see too much that I might start thinking that I had something to do with it. Um, you know, and that prayer has been really helpful. And I think in the moments where we need to be reminded that the Lord is working in the hearts and minds of our students, the Lord always seems to just bring it along right at the right time to go, oh yeah, this is why these conversations matter. This is why, you know, hanging out after practice that extra 20 minutes to speak into a student's life matters. Um, you know, and when we get to graduation day, um, it's almost always this professor or this coach or this staff member that, you know, when you say, hey, you know, what is it that you're going to remember when you leave? Um, you know, it's, it comes back to relationship. Um, and I, I think that's one of the things that Geneva does really well. Um, I think relationships are part of our currency at Geneva. And, and I think our students who find their place here really, that's why. Um, so, um, yeah, so I think um, there are days, right? Um, but uh, I also have to remind myself that probably every day the Lord's like, oh my gosh, Jamie, when will you get it together? Um, which is usually uh, really helpful in having perspective that we're all a work in progress. So, um, but I think there are times, there are times you got to grieve. Um, our students, some of them come with really hard stories um, of, you know, and situations that they're trying to overcome in their life. And, um, and there are a lot of moments, and I'm sure you guys have had these where you feel like, man, it's a privilege to just be with them in that moment. Um, and it's humbling. And, um, and I think when you watch a student walk across the graduation stage, who had the deck completely stacked against them in every way, financially, relationally, you know, whatever is in that story. Um, man, there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better. Um, so that's why I always make sure I go to graduation, as silly as it sounds. Um, I, you know, I think, sitting in those moments and being reminded is really important so i'm i'm, I'm gushing now so i'm gonna stop yeah, that's good i mean i, I think <laughs> i mean I, I think you hit on we look at ways that, that we feel as geneva is distinct from other schools we talk about this in the recruiting process all the time and you mentioned the mentorship program and i know mm -hmm. you and i probably have crossed paths with similar people in our geneva journey that had mm -hmm. huge impacts in our life you know yeah. i think of people like joy jewel yeah. and dr stuart lee and dr white yeah. and dr starrett Sue yep. Hannah, all these people that, you know, yep. uh, we didn't know it maybe as much then as we yeah. appreciate it now. And I think we have those same stories with a lot of our student athletes and students that after they leave Geneva, they really yep. feel the impact that these people had on them. And you're yep. in that role now, and we're in that role now. And yep. so talk a little bit about, you know, you know, you'll take this as a huge compliment, those of us that know Geneva, but, you know, when I'm talking to people about Jamie Swank, this new person mm -hmm. in 
um, you know, in student development, yeah. I often compare you with Joy Jewel. Um, oh, yeah. And so um, I know the impact that she had in your life and so yeah. in so many people's lives. And so um, yeah. talk a little bit about that piece of it in terms of when you were here at Geneva, um, the impact mm -hmm. that someone like Joy Jewel had on you um, and yeah. how we're passing that down to our students now. Yeah, yeah, that, um, yeah, thanks for that, man. I mean, she, uh, Joy was the, the Dean of Students when, when I was here and um, um, <laughs> uh, I, I actually, uh, my, my, my assistant um, was actually Joy's assistant for a while. And I laughed at her all the time because uh, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Because I mean, talk about um, you know the spectrum. Um, Joy was just, you know, she'd never lose her temper. She was always just like incredibly gracious, put together woman. And that's not me. Um, so anything that uh, any notes uh, of her are, are are seeds that she planted for sure. Um, because I, I'm not the gracious human that, 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 she, that she was. Joy actually passed away this spring. And so, um, uh, what legacy. Yeah, I, I, you know, I remember a moment my sophomore year um, where I hit a crossroads and was sitting in her office and, um, and you know, and she, she looked at me and she said, I've learned that people learn more from grace than judgment every day of the week. Um, and in a really critical moment of my life, reached across the table and said, took my hand and said, you are better than you know. Um, and uh, in my personal journey, believing that is still probably the hardest thing um, personally. And, you know, to, to have a moment as a developing adult where you feel like everything's in chaos and everything is falling apart and you will never make sense of it. And um, the grace and the Christ in her uh, reaching across the table to say, um, it's not as bad as you think, you got this, you don't know it yet. Um, you know, 20 some years later to be able to remember exactly the carpet on the floor in that moment and you know all of those things because it it was so pivotal you know I think our prayer as a team in student development as I know it's yours in athletics as well is that by God's grace maybe we get to be the hand that stretches across the table you know and you know sometimes that mentorship is something that is um I've been blessed in, in my short time here to have met with some students regularly, weekly in the mornings. Um, uh, but others, you know, it's a moment. You know, I, I, I think there are those disciple, disciplers and mentors in your life that you have, um, you know, on a more extended basis, you know, that you have them regularly in your life. But I, but I think there are discipleship moments um, as well and uh, that maybe aren't as extended, but, um, you know, so I think one of the things I try to encourage my team is that, hey, there's nothing that we do <clears throat> that's not teaching somebody something. So if it's something as simple as, as responding to um, a facility request in the residence hall, um, and it's really easy for, for young professionals to, um, you know, to see that as, well, I'm about relationship and that's not important. I'm like, but it is important because when we show up and tend to the things that are impacting people, it gains trust. And it shows them that we care about the things that impact them. And it shows them that, um, you know, from that to even student conduct, you know, how do we use student conduct um, and how do we use it redemptively in a, to help students see themselves, to understand what's motivating them when they're making decisions that um, are destructive um, you know, sometimes it's as simple as, is reminding, you know, our staff, we talk a lot about, don't assume people know what they're good at when we talk about calling and career, you know, pulling a student aside and saying, man, do you know that like, man, you killed it. You killed it. Like, I just saw you interact with that other student who was struggling and, and the way that you encourage them, like, you know, what are you thinking about doing with your life? Because obviously you have, um, a gift in that area. 
you know, students look at you and they're like, what, really? Nobody's ever said anything like that to me before. Um, so I think with 1200 students, you know, we can't disciple, I can't, together we can't, I can't disciple them all the way that I would love to, but like, how do we find those discipleship moments? Um, how do we look at everything from, you know, uh, we just finished up, like I said, a, a kind of semester wrap up meeting and, you know, we took a lot of time um, this is actually my plastic flute full of, of sparkling apple cider. Um, and we, um, you know, we're celebrating and we talked about celebration as a spiritual discipline and teaching our young professionals in our area to learn to look back and testify to what God has done. And so the, those are teaching moments. And so how do we incorporate that with our student body um, in every way? So. Um, I hope that it's just so integrated into what we do that we don't have to think about it. Um, you know, um, that just becomes second nature. You know, I think the president always says he wants us to be, to eventually be a culture of discipleship so that people actually have to tangibly opt out to not be discipled. And so that's what we're working towards. That was a very rambly answer. So um, you guys are gonna have to help me here. Well, Jamie, I have, my plastic flute of <laughs> water right, but right. thank you for sharing but yeah well i have you know we have time for a couple questions but i want to ask this question um i always am interested in this how is it working at an institution when you have a law degree mm -hmm. um, and you're trying to balance the fact that um i work in student development i'm not counsel for the college yeah. uh, when everyone's seeking you for law advice I always find that uh, really interesting. Yeah, the 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 beauty is that I um, uh, was not a practicing attorney for very long, <laughs> and so I can always use that as my scapegoat. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, I, again going back to just the provision of the Lord, and um, uh, I graduated from law school in two thousand and six, and shortly after that, uh, we really saw compliance on campus in lots of ways um, become a, a bigger reality. And so um, I'm really grateful to the Lord because I wouldn't have known in that season that the law degree would be as helpful in my work as it is now. Um, you know, I think it helps me think. Um, I, I hope that it helps me serve the college and students well, just in kind of thinking through things. Um, probably the thing that I feel like um, I try to do the most with it is help people not be afraid of the law. Um, I think in, you know, in, in lots of professions, not just education, um, you know, the law is the boogeyman that's right here. Um, and so, uh, people get really scared and nervous. And, um, and so I think trying to work, um, with students and, and, and colleagues and, and say, hey, let's, this is probably what the law is trying to get at. This is why the law is there. Um, a lot of times I found, particularly in higher education, the laws that are there, a lot of times, not always, but many of them have come because we didn't do the things that we should have been doing anyways. And so the law is an imperfect remedy, um, but um, in many ways had to be and had to find a way to be a remedy um, because, you know, institutions nationally, you know, maybe weren't stepping up to plate it to the plate in certain areas. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of what I do, whether it's, um, you know, risk management for an event or program to, uh, compliance issues to, um, you know, even, uh, understanding HIPAA laws when we're talking about a student who's having a mental health crisis. Uh, it's really been invaluable and, um, and folks at Geneva have been super gracious and um, letting me um, wax philosophically once in a while, um, uh, but, but not being too, <laughs> too demanding in that area. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's fun to see how the Lord is, has woven uh, the two things together in a way that was not intentional. I wasn't smart enough to see that in advance. So, 
Well, Jamie, we'll let you go on this last one. And, and I know, you know, you're in the same boat. We, it's, it's a total team effort. Um, <laughs> we're only as good as the people we surround ourselves with, Amen. right? And so Amen. I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of shout out to your team. And, yeah. um, you know, Kelsey has been amazing in residence yep. life and your whole group this whole semester has really come together. So just give you a minute or so to kind of give a shout out to that group and the work that they've been doing. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 it's kind of funny because I feel like I'm, I'm repeating some of the things I just said to them um, right before we, we jumped onto this. Uh, but one thing I said to them is I said, hey, it's a privilege to work alongside colleagues you trust. Um, you don't get that, you know, I've been around the block long enough to know you don't get that all the time, but it's a luxury when you get to like the people that you work with, you know, um, having competent colleagues is, is, is a good thing. Um, having colleagues you trust is is a really good thing, um, and that in itself is a win. Um, but but really enjoying and liking them on top of it is like a double whammy, and um, and and that's just how I feel right now. I feel like um, you know uh, you don't work at a, a at a you know a small Christian school because it's lucrative. You know. Um, you know, we're, we're not, you know, Bill Gates, that's not, nobody's going to know. We know. <laughs> and so, um, you come because you care about the work and you believe in it. And, um, and they have, I mean, they, as everybody has at Geneva from y'all to, from athletics to it, to the cabinet, to faculty, like every, to the, I mean, gosh, to our mail room, to everybody that has had to work overtime, um, through this whole pandemic. But I think what I've just seen is um, an endurance that I, I, I couldn't have imagined um, before we ended up in a moment like this. And, um, and the way that they've chosen their attitude and joy, um, you know, it's a daunting task to remind students a hundred times a day, please put your mask on, you know, <laughs> no, no professional loves doing that. And, you know, then you have staff that live in residence halls that don't get to go home at night. They have to continue to do that all day long. And, um, you know, to our CSE staff who have had to figure out how do you help students belong in a place when everything's distanced, you know, how do we cultivate a campus culture and belonging and um, the amount of time that they've put into even strategizing and, and trying to, to think through that. It's not just about student activities, but how do we cultivate belonging and um, our counseling team who literally went out and got tons of certifications uh, in the spring and over the summer so that they could offer telehealth counseling to students uh, if they were quarantined at home in a different state and who have um, adjusted so um, so well. Our Student Success Center who has, um, you know, in, in a moment like this, um, especially freshmen coming out of a really unique spring semester where prepping and kind of onboarding for college didn't look the same um, and getting our freshmen, I mean, I just, um, man, it's, it's, it's humbling. It, it really is. Um, I'm the least competent person in the room when I'm with them all. And I know it. Um, uh, and, and that's a really good feeling as a leader to look around and be like, my crew's smarter than I am. And, uh, uh, and that's nice, <laughs> you know, and so uh, thanks for that opportunity, because man, they've, they've earned it as as has everybody. But um, it's hard, it's hard so. to admit when your assistant is smarter than you. It's it's hard to do. So it's, <laughs> Great, I, 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 thanks I, for pointing that out, man. She's gonna I, love that one. <laughs> I, I hate to say that with mine on the air here with us, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's, it's sad but true. So. Yeah, it is, but but it is. I mean, I think you know, there's a there's a leadership quote that says, you know, the best thing you can do as a leader is surround yourself with with, with smart and talented people and get out of their way. You know, and. Um, you know, and I'm learning how to get out of the way. I don't think I'm there yet, but uh, the smart, talented people God has, God has blessed us with. So, uh, and then we, we just have fun. I think that's the thing too, is it, you know, despite everything that's been going on, um, you know, we've grieved together um, coming out of the, you know, the, the racial tensions and, and realities of the summer. We've grieved together as a staff and, and have, um, you know, talked about, hey, what is, how do we long together and work together towards reconciliation and, and those types of things. But um, we've also found moments to just laugh. And I love that about our team. And, um, and you guys know, you know, when you're in the trenches, if you can't laugh um, once in a while, you're, you're probably in trouble. So, um, 
and luckily college students do really crazy things and sometimes some really dumb things once in a while and so uh we we have some good laughs so and uh and I'm really grateful for that yeah we try to laugh a lot that's for sure but, <laughs> hey jamie thank you so much at for fan, though right yeah. mostly at fan i'm no, usually no. the target yep <laughs> no 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 but thank you so much for spending yeah, some time with us and we just really appreciate your work this semester and um are looking forward to the spring semester as it will bring its own challenges so yeah uh, thanks again and merry christmas with your christmas tree in the hey, background there. You you're welcome this is the whole covid backdrop i don't got that fancy one y'all got so uh <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely and appreciate you guys super pumped for spring season ready to see our athletes on the field and on the courts um so go tornadoes storm on thanks jamie so, thanks, we'll see jamie. you guys Welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays following great interview with Dean Swank. Um, again, she's just fabulous to work with and really enjoyed our conversation uh, there. As you can plainly tell, she has a heart for the students, um, which is item number one when you're dealing in the, in the role that she's in. She's a great advocate for our students. She's put in some difficult situations very often, having to make hard decisions, um, life lessons per se for kids of this age. and. Um, sometimes those, those conversations are very difficult, but she does it with a loving heart. The students um, know that she's on their side. Um, and she, in, in all these cases, she's rooting for these kids to succeed. Um, sometimes it's challenging um, to go to walk through life at this time during your college experience, but um, she has been an absolute blessing to Geneva College um, and our students are better off for it. No doubt. I wanted to uh, look back in history on December 8th, 2010. Uh, Geneva upset the 22nd ranked team in the country, Malone, 81 to 77 at Malone. Uh, Rich Colick had 26 points and Brian Hill hit four threes. Um, and this, they, they won that game 81-77 after shooting 25% in the first half. Um, so Great halftime adjustments by Coach Sanicero, no doubt. Yeah, and that was quite a program victory. Um, you know, we're going back 10 years now, but um, still something that's talked about on College Hill beating a that was, a that was a that was a time frame in Geneva's athletic history that they were in their provisional phase, but going between division or going from NAI to Division Three, And so that team in particular, all they had was NCCAA postseason opportunities. So there was no NCAA or NAI opportunities. And so to be able to put a team like that together and upset a nationally ranked team. Um, says a lot about what um, Coach Sanicero and that program did during that time, and a lot of our coaches did during that time. We are so grateful for our student athletes during that four-year period that came to Geneva and were willing to sacrifice a lot of postseason opportunities to come to a place and have a great athletic career. And so, uh, for sure, that was a couple of really good names there. We mentioned Brian Hill last episode in terms of his ability to shoot it, um, and Rich was just an unbelievable player. Yeah, you you uh, claim that Brian Hill has no no issue with range at all. He can shoot it from anywhere and make it. Um, so four threes uh, in that game uh, probably um, probably proves something. And not an easy place to play. I mean, I, I remember several times going over to Canton and Malone and not 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 coming out quite as well on the, on the side of the, the side of victory. So always a tough place to play. But uh, yeah, big night for Geneva for sure. Well, I want to look ahead. Uh, next week we are going to. Um, just talk about softball. You're going to get the opportunity to talk about the program, um, you know, that we're both actively involved with, obviously. Uh, but, you know, as an interesting fall, I'm looking forward to talking about that and looking forward to a spring after the season got cut short. Yeah, I mean, never before have we anticipated a year like of this one. So I'm so excited for these young ladies and their opportunity to get out there and hoping everything kind of stays on course throughout the spring and uh, we can get back onto the field in a safe way and, and do so because, um, I think the future for the softball program is really bright. Well, with that being said, thanks for watching uh, today. Uh, have a safe and healthy week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.